Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. So I had a couple people ask me how to do food prep. How do I get started? How do you make a plan? All that stuff. So I thought I would put this little video together to show you how I do it and hopefully it'll help you. So I start by having a general plan. So for this week I knew I wanted breakfast to be ground turkey and muesli, which is kind of like an oats, nuts and seeds um, cereal. I have two shakes a day, two protein shakes that have my carb, protein, and fat in there. And then lunch was gonna be chicken, sweet potato, dinner, pork tenderloin, and plantains. So when you're first starting out, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. I recommend keeping it simple. Have your protein, your carb, and your fat separate. Um, perhaps the fat can be what you're cooking some of the other um, foods in. Um, but if you try to create dishes, like casseroles that have a bunch of different ingredients, it gets really complicated and there are ways to do it but when you're starting out it's just best to make it as easy on yourself as possible so plan for your protein and your carb and your fat and then you can put an easy meal plan together so I'll show you how I put mine together in carb manager to break out for my numbers and then I'll show you how I cook it store it all that good stuff so hopefully this helps so here we have my carb manager, and this is not meant to be a carb manager tutorial. I'm assuming you know how to use that. It's just showing you how I plan out my meals. So each meal, I'm eating five times a day, and every meal I'm having 35 grams protein, 12 grams of fat, and 40 grams of carb. So for breakfast, I start by, I put the muesli in. Um, half a cup was a regular serving, so I just left it at that. Turkey, three ounces. Um, and then I played with, I added a few blueberries, it's not many, 30 grams, and I needed a little bit more fat, so I added some sunflower seeds, which I will just put in the, the cereal. And for this meal, I'm a little under in fat and a little over in carb, but I'm okay with that. Then I went to my shake. Dinner was uh, is chicken and sweet potato, but I'm also gonna have a little bit of a salad with it. So I didn't even put the greens in here, so spinach and that stuff. Um, is so minimal, I just don't even usually put that in. But I did put the green pepper, the tomato, heart of palm, the vinegar. Those are things I'm gonna put in the salad. Um, and really, this is all just, I'll show you how to do it on my dinner meal. It's all a numbers game. So I start usually with the protein, I add the um, carbohydrate, and then I can play with those numbers up or down to get to where I'm trying to hit for each meal. So again, I'm supposed to be 35, 12, and 40. I'm pretty much right on those numbers there. Um, again, a shake, same as the shake before. So let's do dinner together. So dinner's gonna be my snack too. And these are all gonna be foods that I typically eat, so they usually pop up in my recently viewed. So we're gonna go for pork loin first, and enter the protein first. Um, when you're looking up meats, I, my advice is to use the cooked versions. So raw food and cooked food are gonna have different um, grams of protein per weight. So I always look for the cooked versions rather than trying to deal with any kind of calculation. So you don't scan the package, look for the cooked version. And anytime, the first time I put an item in my carb manager, I look up several entries. So if you put in chicken breast, look up a few of the same item and just make sure that they're all relatively the same. You'll see a couple that are, just seem way out of line compared to the rest. So you wanna make sure you're choosing one that seems pretty standard. So I'm gonna choose this pork loin. And let's say maybe we'll start with four ounces. Three, four ounces is usually a pretty good guess. Then we'll go plantains. I can usually get 100 grams or so, so we're gonna leave that at 100 grams. Uh, and then I cook the plantains in coconut or av avocado oil. Uh, I'm gonna use coconut oil here. So I have no idea really how much oil is gonna be on the plantains that I eat. I use maybe two, three tablespoons on all of them. So I'm gonna guess that I'm getting a half tablespoon here. That may be a little bit high, but I'm okay with that. Do your best. And then zucchini. I'm gonna have zucchini with this meal as well. I usually have some kind of veggie. Um, and if the veggie's like spinach, I usually don't even record it. Uh, you can see 100 grams is only giving me three grams of carbs, but I'll still put it in there. So let's see where we're at with this. So I've got 32 grams of protein, 11 grams of carb, and th I'm sorry, fat, and 34 grams of carbs. So pretty close right now. Let's um, add a few more plantains 
to bring up my carb number. So this is where I just play with it. Um, so I don't want that many. I go up 20. So we'll go 20 grams and then see where we're at. And we can get a little more protein, so I'm just gonna bump this up. Maybe we'll go a half an ounce instead of a full ounce. Four and a half. And boom, I, that's exactly on. Wow, look at that. So 35, that never happens. That very rarely happens. 35 gram protein, 12 grams of fat, 40 grams of carb, exactly on my numbers and it just takes playing with these a little bit. But you can see if I had a casserole or a dish that had a lot of different ingredients, how that could make it a lot more challenging. So if you simply have a protein, your carbs, and your fats that you can mix like this, it's gonna make it much easier. So that's how I put together the plan here, and then I will go and cook the food. Okay, so first thing I do is lay out everything that I'm gonna cook and kind of have a plan um, for the order to do it in. Um, I'm going to start with my chicken because I'm putting the chicken and the pork tenderloin both in the instant pot. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, then I'm going to just get my roasting vegetables ready. And then I'll worry about the things that take a little bit less time. So my salad veggies cutting up and steaming the zucchini. Uh, actually, very first what I'm going to do is, so I wash my berries and things like these tomatoes in a little bit of vinegar and water. And that helps kill um, the bacteria that's on there and it actually doesn't leave any taste or anything on there. I don't measure it out. I just put a little bit of vinegar, fill it up with water, and then I literally just let them soak for like 15 minutes. So I'm gonna let these soak while I do all the rest of my food prep. And then I'll just rinse those off and they'll be ready to go. So the chicken for the Instant Pot, these are frozen. Um, so why I love this thing so much, I just take them right out of the freezer, put them in this guy, they're gonna go in for 10 minutes. And then uh, I'll let it naturally release. It'll release for like five minutes and then I'll take it out. Okay, so I actually, um, those were it was frozen as one big clump. So I thawed it a little bit under cold water just so I could break them apart. So I got the chicken breast. I put a little salt, pepper, and just some seasoning on there. You can season it with whatever you want. One cup of water and then in the instant pot they go, it's frozen, I'm gonna do 10 minutes. And I'll let it naturally release for five, um, and then that will be good. So that's done, I'm gonna start prepping the veggies for roasting. The oven is preheating right now. So if you've never had plantains, you totally need to try them. They're in the banana family, but they're more starchy. And the more ripe they get, the more they'll taste like a banana. Um, when you buy them, they're typically green. You've got to wait until they, well, you don't have to. You, there's things you can do with green plantains as well. Um, I prefer to wait until they're yellow and then I either bake or just fry them up in a pan. Um, baking has been my preferred method as of late. Uh, I feel like I use a little bit less oil and it's less kind of time for me. I can just put them in there and then I can do other things. So I'm just gonna cut these up into little rounds. I'm gonna try to make them about the same size. Side note, I'm terrible at that. Do your best. Okay, so I have them all cut up. I have some um, avocado oil in here. I just went across the bottom of the pan to get that oiled up. And then I'm literally just gonna like lay all these out here. And then I'm gonna go over them with some oil again. and season them. I like to season these with just sea salt and I'm gonna put some cinnamon on them. And then I'm actually gonna get these guys in the oven um, while I work on the sweet potatoes because sometimes my oven doesn't cook well when there's a bunch of stuff in there. So we'll get these guys going. 20 minutes total, 10 minutes each side, 425. So moving on to the potatoes, I've um, washed and peeled these. Uh, I leave the skin on sometimes because there are vitamins and, and nutrients in the skin but these aren't organic, so I, I peeled them today. I'm gonna do my best to cut these into little cubes. 
go about the same size. You know, I didn't grow up with a mother that knew how to cook very well or cooking. Even when I was out on my own, my meals consisted of tuna and pretzels and chicken was made on the George Foreman grill because I didn't know how to use the oven or the stove. So everything that I've learned is just been trial and error, Googling things. Um, one of the things I started doing when I moved to California was I'd go to the farmer's market and just try a new vegetable, something that I had no idea what it was, never heard of, never had before, and I would just Google it. Google what it was, I'd buy it first, Google what it was, how to cook it, and I've discovered new foods that I've loved in doing that, or just checking websites for um, various recipes and trying different ingredients that I had never had before. So, you know, if a lot of this stuff seems overwhelming, you just gotta take it a little bit at a time. Every week gets easier and easier, and then you can branch out and try new things. Um, it does get better. Now the stuff is like second nature to me, but it's just from practicing over time. So that's the plantains. I'm gonna flip them. Basically what I'm going to do is just take a fork and flip each of these. They come off from nicely. Oh, they're sticky. Gah. Here we go. Perfect. So you want them a little bit brown on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and flip each of these. I'll be back. Okay, so flip the plantains, put them back in for 10 more minutes. While I did that, the chicken was done. It beat. Um, it's been naturally releasing for five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and release the rest of that. Take that out. I finished cutting up my sweet potatoes so you can get those guys in the oven. So it's totally done. Uh, 170, it's a little bit more than done. We're going to take these guys out. I'm going to cut it up before I put it in the fridge. I'm going to let it cool while I do other stuff. I'm going to let that cool down a minute so that I can clean it for the um, pork tenderloin. In the meantime, I'm going to finish cutting my potatoes. Okay, so plantains are done. They're golden, crispy on both sides. Yum, I took them out. Um, I finished cutting up the sweet potatoes, so I'm gonna I didn't move them to a bigger bowl. There's so many. I'm gonna toss them in some avocado oil. Some salt. Alright, so I'm going to put these in the oven about 30 minutes. Every 10 minutes I'm going to move them around and kind of flip them. I'm going to wash out the Instant Pot and then I'll show you how to get the pork tenderloin started. And we're almost done. Alright, so I've already flipped the sweet potatoes. I cleaned out the Instant Pot. I've got it on saute and it's hot. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to brown the pork tenderloin first. So I put some oil in the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to put this guy in. I'm going to sear it a couple minutes on each side. Once I do that, I'm going to season it and then I'll put it back in. I'll show you that. We've got back. Alright, so I was able to cut up the chicken while this was browning because I'm all by task. Sweet potatoes are done. They took about 20 minutes. So the oven's off. They're in there just while the oven is cooling down. And now this guy. He's nice and golden brown, so I'm going to turn this off. Kind of just gonna scrape up any bits that are at the bottom. I'm actually going to put the trivet in there. This needs a cup of water. You always need a liquid in the instant pot when you are using that. And then I'm going to season this. We're going to do salt and cumin. Same thing on the other side. Now you can get fancy. 
fancier with your spices. You can have them all mixed up and, you know, put it on there a little bit more delicately, but this is how I do it. So that's all there. We're gonna put this back in here. I'm gonna cook this just for five minutes. It takes a little bit longer to come to pressure. Um, manual, five minutes. And we're getting there, guys. All right, so I'm gonna rinse the tomatoes. And then the last thing I have to do is steam the zucchini and cut up the pepper. It's gonna go in my salads. I have another one, um, but I'm gonna wait to cut that up until I finish this one so that it uh, hopefully lasts a little bit longer. So for the zucchini, I literally just cut off the ends. Again, cut them into rounds. Um, not very creative, as you can see, but it gets the job done. And I eat it the same way all the time. Zucchini is literally my favorite vegetable. I don't even know why, I just love it. I eat it every week. I kind of eat it every week just like this, actually. <laughs> so the summer squash, the yellow ones, I actually like to peel the skin off of. I think you can eat this the same, the skin just the same as the green, but for some reason, I leave the skin on the green ones and I peel the yellow ones. I don't know. So we have a little steamer guy that I'm going to steam these with before I had that. I would just have a little um, tray in a, so in a pot and put the vegetables on top, water steams underneath, however you steam your vegetables. And then we cut up the pepper. So the pork's done already. Um, I'm just gonna let it naturally release for a couple minutes and then that will be Done. All right, I'm just gonna put these in some Tupperware, give that another minute, let that rest. When the zucchini's done, I will wrap it all up for you. Okay, so there we have it. In less than a couple hours, I have um, some tomatoes and peppers cut up for my salads. I've got my pork tenderloin, chicken, and I made the turkey earlier, I forgot. Uh, I need that for breakfast this morning, so I did have turkey. Zucchini steamed and then sweet potatoes and plantains roasted. So I share a fridge with two roommates um, There's not a ton of room for me to like make all of my meals and then put them in there So I store my food like this and then usually the night before when I was working I would get all my food ready for the next day and then I would put that day's worth of food in containers So my breakfast and my shakes I make the day of or the night before I make the eggs um if I'm having them, the muesli, I put that in a container and then I make my shakes for the next day. Um, everything else I get set kind of like this. Um, also, the other thing I wanted to mention is sometimes I run out. So sometimes, you know, pork, pork tenderloin doesn't last me the whole week. I always have kind of emergency proteins, either more in the freezer or in my pantry like tuna fish so that I can substitute if I do run out. Um, I, this week I bought two um, pork tenderloins, I've cooked one now, one's in the freezer, and then maybe Wednesday or Thursday, I'll have to make another one. Um, so just know that sometimes you might run out of food, but you gotta have backups. I've got more plantains ready, I've got rice also if I needed to use that for a carb. Um, it's just about being prepared, and that comes with trial and error. This wasn't a, you know, figured it all out on the first shot. This was, oh crap, I ran out of food on a Wednesday, I don't have time to go to the grocery store. I'll plan better next week. So I hope this helps. If you have questions, let me know um, and I will answer those for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.